Today I have 13 tips and ideas on how to photograph spring as a landscape photographer and the reason for this video is because spring is right around the corner. Hey everyone, my name is Toma, Photo Tom here on YouTube and this channel is all about landscape photography so if you're interested in this topic make sure to subscribe for more similar videos. The first thing that comes to mind when you think about spring is the fresh green. So we stayed in house all winter, we saw the white of the snow, which is really great when the first snow appears, but at some point you, you get bored of all this snow and you want to see something different. Well, spring is that season when everything comes alive and uh, everything gets beginning to look green and colored. So um, the first tip or idea that I have for you is to capture that fresh green. The moment the forest uh, comes to life the the first green that the leaves are having it's looking really really well and it's uh, I don't know it's, but it's completely different from every other green that you can photograph uh, along here the second tip that I have for you is also related to forests because as you know forests are my preferred subject and I couldn't talk about landscape photography during spring without mentioning photographing foggy forests. Uh, spring is the season when fog is something that, uh, I don't know, uh, it's, it's, it's the default state of, uh, of nature and the reason for that is because the nights are really cold, the mornings begin to be a little warmer, you get uh, high humidity during the night and the, combining that with the warmth of the sun in the morning, you get the uh, mist in the forest. Tip number three, uh, hike up the mountains for the sunrise. Uh, spring and also autumn are really spectacular when it comes to sunrises or sunsets and that is because nature is changing. It's, uh, it's coming from all that cold and going to warmer temperatures and all those differences in temperatures create some really beautiful and interesting atmospheric uh, moments and it can look really really spectacular. You can have dramatic clouds, you can have mist in the morning, you can have all sorts of uh, dramatic situations when you are up on the mountain. Tip or idea number four, while you are on the mountain you should also pay attention to the grass level because the first flowers are going to uh, appear and just bear in mind that the flowers that you're going to see on top of the mountain are going to be different from the ones in the fields or the forest and you should try and capture that in those uh, in your landscape photos the way i do it is lay really low on my belly usually and i'm photographing into the lights I'm, I'm, i like to photograph the flowers in the sunset or sunrise light and um, you this way you get you get a glowing feeling from those flowers the the, the light fills the the leaves the the petals and it really brings all the colors to life. So I think they look really, really well. Idea number five relates to flowers again, and that is to photograph flowers in the fields because they're going to look completely different. When you're going to do that, use a longer focal length and a wider aperture just to separate the flower from the background. Uh, otherwise, you're going to see a complete, a, a, a complete mess uh, with the entire field. Um, you can also go into the forest, and uh, this is a bonus idea. Uh, you can go into the forest and look for flowers that have uh, white caps. And then you wait a little bit for the proper light, and when you're going to photograph it, that flower is going to pop, it's going to be uh, interesting, and it's going to separate from the rest of the vegetation because of that white cap. Idea number six, panoramas look, look um, really great during spring. So as a landscape photographer, uh, just check it out because um, the fields are filled with that fresh green that is specific to, to spring, and also you get the trees that are blossoming. So you have a really, really beautiful and unique moment. You, you can't see this in, during another season. So 
why not capturing it in a really beautiful photo and uh, why I'm saying panoramas and not a simple photo because I think panoramas um, it gives you a better feeling of uh, let's say the place idea number seven relates to mountains again because we have those changes in temperatures uh, mornings can be really dramatic so you don't necessarily have to be on top of the mountain you can be at the base of the mountain you look at it and you usually you'll usually see uh, that dramatic atmosphere in the morning with the mists rising from the trees and uh, creating all those beautiful patterns so um, yeah it's a situation you should not miss so if you want to learn more about landscape photography and you also want to support me you can join me on one of my workshops you can join me for tuscany in may or the dolomites in september or you can uh, buy my landscape photography ebook and you can learn more about landscape photography tip number eight uh, don't forget long exposures um, again because of differences in temperature the clouds look really really interesting and there are uh, there are uh, also high winds especially in the mountains and you get that fast movements in the clouds so um, it's the perfect situation when you could do a long exposure during the day and capture the movement of the clouds now a side tip this is something that i learned from michael kenna whenever you do a long exposure and you're involving clouds just look at your subject and position yourself if it's possible it's not always possible but if it's possible position yourself in such a way that the direction the clouds are moving points you to the subject and this is a really powerful technique to draw attention to the subject idea number nine um, if you are in lower areas um, and you have uh, a valley usually in that valley it's gonna get colder during the night and in the morning you can have uh, mists rising or um, different atmospheric elements I'm always looking for something like this because I think um, the these kind of atmospheric conditions uh, add some uh, elements to the to the photo without these elements I think the photo is okay but it kind of lacks something and when you can tell the viewer how how the weather was because when someone sees fog uh, it it can bring memories to the, in that person or, or that person better understands uh, the 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 weather conditions that I was photographing in idea number ten um, so there are going to be places where snow doesn't want to go and these are places facing north where the sun shines uh, just uh, just a few moments a day uh, each day so you're going to have snow in that direction when uh, in that area so just look for areas that are not facing the the sun and you can see snow um, for example i did a long exposure in this photo with a lake and i have the snow in the background and it's it's interesting to capture it like this um, also you can incorporate some green elements in front uh, in the foreground just to give a hint that okay it's spring and, and uh, snow it's uh, it's gonna go idea 11 um, in the morning in the forest there's a lot of dew uh, during spring and um, you also have those beautiful uh, forest flowers so if you get really low you can capture those flowers and uh, those drops in uh, of water on the on the grass on the flowers especially it's a, if it's a, um, a cold morning or it rained last night this is a really good moment for you to go in the forest now uh, just remember that the vegetation is going to be wet so whenever i'm doing this i'm wearing rubber um, boots and I'm having something with me to put on the ground something with me to put on the ground uh, because I don't want to stay on my belly directly on the wet ground <laughs> idea number 12 um, because snow is melting up in the mountains the rivers ha um, lo are looking really really well and uh, also the waterfalls look really well and uh, the volume of water is really high so you can do some really beautiful um, waterfall photography right now 
And finally, number 13, uh, and it's not something that will bring you bad luck. Uh, even if it's spring and you get this really beautiful uh, green and uh, the colors, this doesn't mean that you can't do uh, black and white images. So, for example, in this photo, I had a really dramatic atmosphere. I had dramatic clouds, dark clouds, and I, th I really thought that making that image black and white would, uh, would make it even more dramatic. And I, I could share with the viewer how dramatic the weather really was uh, on top of that mountain in that moment. So there you have it, 13 tips and ideas uh, for spring landscape photography. If you have something to ask or something to add, use the comment section below. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way that you can get better. Bye bye.